What is going on, family? How is everybody doing? Listen, we are not going to try to be here too long today uh, because we have, listen, we've been doing marathon shows and taking a long time because the celebrities been acting up, so we're not going to try to do too much of that today. We're going to try to get in and get out, orchestrate, and produce a show that matters while not taking up too, too much of your time. And let's, let's, but let's also forget that sometimes I make a mistake and lie. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes, fam, you, we all know that sometimes I make a mistake and I might just be here a little bit longer than I thought I was going to be here. Okay? But in terms of my intention for today, my intention for today is try to is try to is try to keep it a little bit shorter than normal just so um just so just just because just because fam just just absolutely because let me let me mute my own laptop before it starts making all kinds of noise we all already got enough little noises coming through here listen for those of you all who do not, do not know let's take care of a little bit of housekeeping um we have released earlier ahead of time the name of um, the hotel that we're going to have the ADOS Summit at. Um, also, if you have not gone to joinados.com, please go there. But we have, please make sure, fam, please make sure if you book your hotel, make sure you go through the link that is up at ADOS, ADOS org, our ADOS Foundation um, Twitter account. Make sure you use that. I also retweeted it. You will get a confirmation that says you have signed up as, as to, to as a, book the hotel for the ADOS Foundation Summit, which will be in New Orleans. Woohoo! We're going to be there in October and have us do some good stuff, man. Do some do some politics, plot a path forward, um, collaborate, all of those kinds of things. So I just wanted to make that absolutely clear to everyone as we go through the show. Those of you all who do not know, I've just been watching her talk about celebrities. I don't really know who she is, what, she, what they stand for. Please go to adosfoundation.org and you can find out exactly what we stand for. We stand for reparations on a black agenda. And today we're going to talk about some of the people who get in the way of us actually doing that, but we're going to have a kind of unity conference. So if you have problems, I don't want to hear nothing about it. If you have problems with something and you want to get it done, well, we want you to be there. We want you in attendance, right? We're going to send out um, something to our members. Again, if you want to, if you want to join, make sure you go to joinados.com. We're going to send something out to you all to make sure if you have any recommendations as well. I have my own thoughts, but I want to be inclusive. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Listen, we got people causing problems. Now, we know celebrities have been causing all kinds of ruckus for a minute, right? We know, we know, we know that. <laughs> get your libations. Don't get <laughs> whatever you need to get yourself through the show. Now, we know that they've been causing all kind of ruckus. It's all, it's all been kind of comedic stuff lately. We saw, we saw, um, we saw Eddie Griffin jump into it recently. He don't talk about, well, you know, I do this, Shannon, Shannon Gay and Shannon, he, I, I, I swear, it's, I have never seen so many men who say they straight go out and talk. And he went out and he went his way not to say nothing about Cat Williams. I talk, Cat, me and Cat, we never wore the dress and we the same. He caused all kind of problems. Then, child, we had, we're not going to talk about them day, but child, we saw Tiffany Haddish. She say, she say she over there in Israel and she going to figure some things out. <laughs> child, let me just say, it's, let me just tell you, but I wanted to bring that up because of this. The reason I want to bring that up is community, family, Hit the like button if you understand that we have a lot of problems and it's not just celebrities. Celebrities are just a window through which we understand social engineering and how people try to manipulate us through celebrities. I don't know what Tiffany Hatch was doing. Nobody was trying to manipulate us through anything. She just got on the plane. Child, that child's so confused and lost. She She's Eretrian. She said she like to eat food with her hands and she's going to Israel. She's going to figure it out. She's going to find her man. Lord have mercy. If don't nobody need to sit down, Tiffany Hatch need to have several seats, ladies and gentlemen. But a lot of them need to have several seats. And I don't want everybody to feel like I'm just picking on the celebrities. So today I want to talk about some of the political commentators who get in the way of what we're trying to do. Because we have a lot of problems that we don't talk about in our community. And when we do, we tend to have, we tend to talk about it like it's little old folk colloquialism. Well, I tell you what the problem is. With, I tell you what the problem is. Everybody just need to work harder. Everybody just need to learn how to, how to, how to slaughter a hog. What? <laughs> I tell you what the problem is. I tell you the problem is you don't know how to farm. I tell you what the problem is. Let me let me just say the problem is the people who are telling us what the problem is. So 
let me get down. Let me get down to the nitty and the gritty. So I saw this. I saw this up, and I didn't want to touch on it because y'all know. If you if you don't know, go back and look at it. Joy Reid uh, smeared us and said we were disinformation. So I don't have no love for for the blonde wig lady. I have no love for her at all because she doesn't do her research. She's not a journalist, so I try to ignore everything about her that comes across my feed. I don't want to see it. But then we have to talk about it because you look at the other people who are talking about her and they just as bad as her. So we got Jason Whitlock over here trying to have a conversation with somebody. And this, let me tell you, let me tell you what one of the problems is, fam. We got to talk about what the problems are. And one of the problems is we let anybody talk to us. We don't ask what you do. What, uh, by what right do you have to talk about this? Well, well, what does the data say about any of this? So they're having a conversation about reparations. Now, first of all, I want to say I this is and this is not anything against uh, uh, black immigrants who may be in this country. And this isn't just about black immigrants, it's about Joy Reid. We have to talk about who is the heir. And what do you mean, Yvette? Who is the heir? We are blackity, blackity, black. No, we're ADOS. We're American descendants of slavery, the institution. But Joy Reid's parents are Guyanese and Congolese. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that, but we're talking about who is the heir. And we're going to get to that little other man who we don't know who. We got a lot of random people that got pulled out of Cracker Jack boxes just to get on, just to get on and talk. But we're going to talk about Joy Reid, too, because when you talk about that, right, what that means for me is that Joy Reid doesn't have ancestors to go back to slavery, Jim Crow, Reconstruction, right? That means if you want to talk about the Congo, she has one parent from the Congo, one parent from Guyana. That means that she is far more of an authority than me to speak on that because she has people and that civil war that happened in that country, and I think it may be still ongoing. She is an expert, and she has family there. If she were to ever sit and cross from me and say, Vet, hey, I got this. I don't need you talking about the Congo. I can't say, well, I read King Leopold's ghost. You can't tell me. No. She has blood there. That means that she has more of a right to talk about that than I do. Knock yourself out, Joy Reid. Now, I want to point out something, because sometimes we tend to think about this as just a black immigrant versus ADOS or whatever. And I don't think it's versus anybody. It's like, who is the heir? What does your line go all the way back to, right? And so if you're talking about reparations, who should be talking? I have parents who I have a parent who comes from sharecroppers, right? Both come from poverty. I, have, I can talk about that because it's in my line, right? Just because I'm light-skinned doesn't mean I don't get to talk about that. It's still my line. And we have it the gamut in this country because all the way back to slavery, we've talked about this. Uh, the women have not had, have not been able to protect themselves and their bodies. So we look like everything. So don't try to pull that, well, melanin, 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 melanin thing on me. These are just key facts about the 47.9 million blacks in this country. And I want to share with everybody that still, even today, the vast majority, if you look at the vast majority, are ADOS. Like, even today, the vast majority of blacks in this country are ADOS. What does that mean, Yvette? Well, the question then becomes, why well, we can't ever speak for ourselves? See, I want to bring you right back up here for a second. I want to bring you right back up here. Because what, what you have is this young man here, too, he's talking about he's bright. you got to understand. Let me slow this down. You have to understand when people are virtue signaling. So he, I'm going to bring up an article he has at The Root where he's talking about what he learned from his father. And then he talks about how his father is Caribbean. That's virtue signaling that there's something distinctly different and better about people that come from a different place who may be black than other people here. Because I didn't hear you talk about anything about the people who built the country and the civil rights movement that allowed your father to come here. I didn't hear anything about them. But here you are being conservative with Jason Whitlock, and we're going to get to him too. We got three problematic people in one Negro photo. And the problem becomes, why are we listening to these people? Why are these people influencing our politics? So what I just put up here, because I want to make sure everybody has the data in terms of who we are, the, in terms of single race, you see, you see black, Hispanic, and shout out to the, to the, to the Afro-Latinos who have been talking and who have been holding into account Latinos for their racism within their group. Shout out to y'all. We have multiracials right there, 5.4 million, non-Hispanic, and then you have single race at 39.6 million. Now, I'm bringing that up just so everybody understands where we are. 
right? I'm bringing that up just so body, everybody understands what the numbers look like in this country. The black population in the U.S. has grown 32% since 2000, rising from 36.2 million, then to 47.9 million in 2022. Notably, the number of people self-identifying as another race in addition to black, to black has increased nearly 254% since 2010. The arrival of new immigrants from Africa and the Caribbean and elsewhere has been an important contributor to growth uh, uh, of, of to, to black population growth. In 2022, there 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 were what does that say? There were 5.1 million black immigrants in the U.S., up from 2.4 million in 2000, according to our analysis. Uh, uh, to our analysis of Census Bureau data, immigrants accounted for 11 percent of the black population. Um, in 2022. Now, I I have issues with that number because we we're not talking about immigrants and their descendants. So I have I have issues with that number. But the black population has grown fastest in places that do not typically have uh, black residents, such as Utah. That's got to be black immigrants. Black immigrants is that y'all? Because we don't usually go and deal with the Mormons like that. <laughs> like y'all got to tell me y'all hanging out over there. Like, I just want to know. I, I'm not judging nobody. I'm not judging nobody at all. I just want to know if that's what, is that what y'all hanging out at. Now, ain't nobody. Don't, don't, I'm not saying nothing bad to you. <laughs> but what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make is that we have talked, we have spoken a long time about disaggregation, meaning that we disaggregate ourselves not because of hate, we disaggregate ourselves from other groups the same way the Asians have done, the same way the Latinos have done. You look at this, everybody's disaggregating. Just so we can measure and count. So if we count Joy Reid in terms of uh, black immigrants and their descendants, we have to disaggregate even further and say, wait a minute. We are not in a situation, Joy Reid, where we're even talking about you because this is an escape hatch. A lot of immigrants, black immigrants say, well, I'm a black immigrant and black immigrants have done X, Y, and Z. I'm not saying that's not true. What I am saying is that tell me how your specific people, you have to tell me about the Congolese and you have to tell me about the Guyanese and their particular contribution. And you have to tell me, given that, why should you be speaking on behalf of ADOS, right? Because first of all, Jory, I told y'all all back in 2011 that they was going to tell you that Obama was your reparations. I've been told you that. I've been said that. I, I, I've I been told y'all they was going to say that. And while you was over there, how did, and let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me, can, can I put out a conspiracy theory? <laughs> Why does Joy Reid keep be the only one to keep a job? Melissa Harris Perry was over there. I keep, I keep wondering why nobody sees this. Melissa Harris Perry was over there and, and they, 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 they got her out of there. Right. And Joy Reid slid right into the slot. She didn't say she didn't want no sisterhood or nothing. She slid right into that slot. Now, then, uh, they got, they got Tiffany Cross out of there and they got Torrey, everybody out of there. And Joy Reid just say, Oh, we might, that's my sister. Y'all don't know how sisters get down, but you never stood with your sisters enough to leave. Like all of these, all of these women, quote unquote, black women all around you have been losing their jobs and be being mistreated. But she is the only one there. She is the only one that stays there. I just, Joy Reid say, talk a whole lot of trash and say, yeah, I stand with you, girl. I'm with you. MSNBC ain't nothing. But how you always keep your job? I just have questions about people who talk trash about the boss but always keep their job. Are you in the boss's office late telling tales, talking about it's Don't y'all ever be suspicious of that when y'all get fired or y'all always get in trouble at your job and it'd be one person who don't never get in trouble and be always in there talking about, mm, yeah, I don't like them too. They get on my nerve. They, I, I'm trying to find me something else, but they don't never find something else and everybody except them always get in trouble. I'm just saying it's just before I get to King Leopold's ghost and all that, I'm just saying it's always... It, it just strikes me as odd is all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It strikes me as odd that she just be over there with a whole job all the time and, and with everything that done. I, everybody else get fired all around her. Landmines go all around, all around Joy Reid. Joy Reid don't get touched. And if you had a white company, <laughs> landmines is going all around you and you don't get touched. What's going on? Yeah, Todd, same thing with Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton, everybody get fired. He's still there. How y'all doing? Can't read a teleprompter to save his life. He said, I could drive the what? Do we going to go to break in three, five, eight, two, zero. What? What you say? What you say? What is going on? So I bring up this because 
when we talk about Joy Reid, and, and, and there's no shade in terms of being Congolese, in terms of being Guyanese, we have to talk about who oppressed and colonized Congo. That was King Leopold. If I, if I would never challenge anybody from the Congo or parents is from the Congo about King Leopold. I read King Leopold's ghost. That was heinous. And if y'all want to go check it out, please do. But we're talking about who is the heir. Joy Reid is the heir to that oppression. Her family comes from there. She can speak on that and the, and the results of that and the consequence of that in a way that I cannot. But I can speak on slavery. I can speak on Reconstruction, Jim Crow, sharecropping in a way that she cannot. So why do I need her to speak for me? When we go to this, when we go back over here, you see that this, this young man talks about his family is Caribbean, the one on the bottom. We're going to get to him. Why, why are two of the three people on this panel not coming from this thing we come from and behaving as if they're experts? Now, I have had run-ins with that young man on Twitter. And it, that makes me wonder where in the world did he come from? Why are these people speaking for us? Because the, we look at the guy in these population. We look at that... 231,000? Is that? And they're mostly in New York City. So it's not even spread across America in terms of in terms of experience and understanding of a country. So you have to disaggregate black immigrants because there are a lot more Nigerians than there are um, than there are, 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 are Congolese, and there are a lot more. So even if you talk about contributions and you talk about understanding, that's different. You have to disaggregate that because even black immigrants are not the same. And they will tell you, well, black immigrants have made a contribution to this country, too. And I'm not saying they haven't. But tell me about the contribution of Congolese and Guyanese and tell me about that oppression. I'm understanding through that lens. Not just, You can't take credit for all the black immigrants in whatever country they come from who have done something. South Africa has a different experience. We rallied for South Africa. That's a different thing. All of these are different things and different contributions. That's what I'm saying. Now, let me get to something else. We can get to all these numbers, right? And everybody can look them up in your own time. Like I said, I'm not going to be here that long today. You look at the, the Congolese arrivals are even smaller in terms of refugees who came and people who are here. So you'll have somebody. So it's, 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 we have millions of ADOS in this country. So you have to ask yourself, with all of these millions of ADOS in this country, why in the world we're still, we're still the vast majority of quote-unquote blacks in this country? You have to ask yourself, why in the world are two of the three people who are speaking on our affairs not us? I never expect to be able to speak on Guyanese issues. I cannot speak on Congolese issues. Why is why do I look? I, I'm not speaking on Japanese issues. I mean, I'm not I, I'm not speaking on um uh, 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 Jamaican issues. I'm not speaking on Haitian issues. I can't. I'm not. A, I, I didn't live that. So why in the world is everybody is everybody speaking on our issues? That's my question, right? That has to be something in intentional at play. Now, we like I said, I began with who is the heir to what. So we. You can't say that we are the ones who have who have lived through everything. Our, our ancestors have lived through slavery, Jim Crow, whatever, and somebody else can come here and speak on it. I get to speak on my life. I get to speak on my, my heritage. I get to speak on my lineage. Now, before anyone else says, though, oh, my God, you just that's not right. You shouldn't be that way. Uh, and and you, you're just getting on a specific group of people. This, my life is expressed through this chart. Your life is, too, if you're ADOS. American descendants of slavery, the institution. Your life is expressed through this chart. That minus 1% at the bottom, that is an expression of oppression, multi-generational oppression. That is the expression of that. That is the expression of why we're owed reparations. That is the expression of it. So we're going to get to Jason Whitlock, too, because I don't want anybody to say, well, you just picking, you just picking on. No, 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 no. We're going to get to the, we're going to get to the people. Because as far as I know, he's Ados. Y'all know anything different? We're going to get to our own, too, who just, who just decide, you know, whatever. I'm going to say whatever I got to say to get me a check. I, I, a child, a check is a check is a check is a check. It ain't just, it's not just. It's not just. Right? It's not just the, the oppressor, like we said with the celebrities last week. It's not just the oppressor, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just the white man. The white man has tools at his disposal, and these two, this man, Delano Squires, is one of them. Sir, why are you up there? You know, one of the questions we never ask, we always ask when we see somebody somewhere, we always ask, 
well, is he right or wrong? We never ask by what right he has to talk. We never ask that. What right have you? Where did you come from? Who picked you out of a Cracker Jack box? I hate to show my age, but who picked you out of a Cracker Jack box and decided that you was going to be somewhat talking about something? And it's just, well, families matter. Yes, families matter. Nuclear families matter. All of that stuff matters. All kind of fa- Yes, that matters. But you have to get into the crux of the conversation. If you all go and watch this part of the conversation, they have a conversation where they say, Jason Whitlock says, well, I used to agree with Tana Hansi Coates, and I used to agree with reparations, and I used to, and, but now I think, now I think, what I think, and people just come up with stuff. They don't have no basis for it. Now I think that it's just a, a way to entitlement. It's a psyop to entitlement. Now I think. Why should I care about what Jason Whitlock thinks about reparations or politics? Why? From what I understood, you were supposed to be talking about sports. See, the problem is we don't push people back into their lane. We don't, we don't say, hey, 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 Dodo Bird, you're too much of a Dodo Bird to be talking over here. Go, go, do, your little, go do your little step and fetch it over there. Go, go fight with Stephen A. some more. Y'all fight. Y'all, it's, gonna be, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a step and fetch it versus a step and fetch it. Y'all can step and fetch it together. Get it down. We don't ever tell people that. We don't ever tell people you don't know enough. And you don't even have to know what he doesn't know to know he doesn't know enough. You know why? Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you absolutely why. We're going to talk about absolutely how you can know. Just some questions you can ask, because I've had an interaction with this young man. There's a question you could ask yourself to try to figure out whether somebody knows enough. Do you use data at all in your critique? Or do you say that you just feel? Do you use any kind of data in your political critique? I don't care about how you feel. Ain't nobody your boyfriend, girlfriend, mama, daddy. We don't care about your feelings. We don't care if you bumped your knee, bumped your head. Don't nobody care if your heart is broken. Don't tell me how you feel. Well, now I feel. There's no basis for it. When people come and start talking to you about how they feel and there's no basis for it, they're hiding their stupidity behind their emotions every time. He never said what changed his mind. People are paying you to come on TV and oppose everything Negroes stand for. So when he, when I talked to him, he said, what role does family structure play? So everybody wants to make it as if, well, well, you just don't want people to be married. No, here's the thing. He's, this is why, and this is why he's a dodo bird. There are certain things that are foundational to a family. And it's not just your commitment to a family. You can be committed to your husband or wife all day. There are going to be stressors in your life. And what I'm telling you and this little moron is that the things that are stressors to our life as ADOS are multi-general. They come out of racism. They come out of slavery. They come out of Jim Crow. They come out of failed reconstruction. They come out of sharecropping. They come out of convict leasing. They come out of lynchings. They come out of all that. So you can't tell me that the solution is just to get married when this country owes us something you don't read enough to have the kind of conversations you're trying to have see because there's a great article and if you all get a chance please read it i brought it up here before so i won't bring it up here again if you all go read this article escaping poverty requires almost 20 years with nearly nothing going wrong that is what i'm advocating i'm advocating that if you're expecting 20 years as a Negro, as an eight house person, if you're expecting to have 20 years for nothing to go wrong, how many of y'all have had 20 years where nothing went wrong? Do you know that that's normal for some groups? Do you know that if we got reparations, we will have something in our account that no matter what went wrong, we could take care of it? A roof leak. Your check engine light come on. Your transmission went bad. All kind of stuff go around us. We walk through landmines. See, these are things, as I was trying to tell him, that weaken the family structure so you can have the best intentions to get with your mate. Right? You can have the best intentions to get with somebody, and you can love them. You can love their dirty drawers. But when this stuff starts coming at you, it's going to stress your relationship. And it's, that comes out of the creation of race, which is what we understand as lineage now because there are so many disparate groups in the country. That comes out of that. So you have to have a policy that fixes something that strains those relationships and strains those communities. Why do we live in impoverished communities? We never got reparations. 
And you're going to just sit there and say, well, you know, I don't think we should have reparations anymore. I don't think, you know, I just I just changed the way I feel about it. I, I used to feel the way, but now I kind of feel away. And there's no basis for it. When you come to these people, you should say, what is your basis for that? Tell me about the information that you read that made you be in favor of reparations. Let's talk about historically what has been taken from us. I don't care if we're talking about the plunder of black farmers. I don't care if we're talking about housing discrimination. I don't care if we're talking about lynchings. I don't care if we're talking about redlining. Tell me how America has made up for that and made us whole. Because what I see is that we are falling. Remember when I said we were going to fall off a cliff? This says minus, this says minus 1.4%. With the Hispanic, you say plus twenty percent. With the with the uh, with the with the white, you see plus twenty eight percent. Right? That shows you we're going up a cliff. That is an expression. That is an expression of what America has done in this country. And you don't get to just say, "Well, I disagree." You gotta be smarter than that. You gotta be smarter than that. And y'all gotta make people be smarter than they. They shouldn't get to. They can disagree. So don't say, hey, Vet, are you saying people shouldn't disagree? Disagree all you want to, but you got to disagree with data. Don't come on here and play me for a fool. Life is too hard for that. Life is too much for that. Don't come on here and play me like I'm stupid when you stupid. You got to prove You got to prove to me that you know something. You got this little man on here from a Cracker Jack box. You just pull him out. He was on. He got the blaze. And white folks just let me tell you, white folks. Remember, white folks got that man to testify about reparations who had been running around New York City with a diaper on. Come on, man. Like at, at a certain point, what are we gonna do? Y'all let that. Y'all let. And they still trying to normalize him. They still trying to run around New York City with a diaper on his butt as a grown man and testifying like an expert on reparations. We don't hold people accountable. So when I say this, what I was saying to him, and I said, I said, I believe in the, the I believe family structure is important. I also know that both math, mass incarceration and financial strain weaken the nuclear family. Without wealth, this becomes an extremely difficult task. Unfortunately, this can't be reduced to just a values discussion. And what they want to say, and this is why you always got to worry about the terrain on which you're having to fight. They want to move the terrain of having to fight from policy to values. Your values are just messed up. You all have bad values. You just don't want to get married. You just don't love each other. You just don't. You, your morals are wrong. And you can go all the way back to the Colonel Report and find out the same thing they said then is the same thing we know today. It is not a value discussion. It's a policy discussion. Do not let people like this get you off. Because he ran away after I said this because he wasn't ready for nothing. He's not ready for this discussion. He's only ready for the talking points that somebody has fed him. He's not thinking for himself. And I don't think Jason Whitlock is thinking for himself either. As a matter of fact, I don't think Whitlock is thinking at all. He's just saying some stuff that he knows will drive controversy and drive clicks. And nobody ever says the truth. I don't have proof that you're not stupid. I'm just saying, you, you saying how you feel don't mean you're not stupid. You, this is foundational. You have to be able to pass down wealth in the richest country in the world, and then you have to ask yourself, what, where did our wealth go? Right? And this was him talking about his dad came from Barbados. That's the Cracker Jack box man that just show up to talk. See, we let anybody have a conversation. Okay, anybody can do comedy. Fine. We talked about the comedians the other week. But we let anybody decide they can come and have a conversation on what, what, what means something to us. So now white folks is watching saying, well, my dear, there's even disagreement amongst the blacks. He should not be able to even go in a restaurant without somebody shouting him down and throwing a biscuit at his head. Because you're getting in the way of what we need to move forward. We're owed that. And then I got another question before I go. I got another question. If y'all are so opposed to reparations, and if we believe what Jason Whitlock said, let me make sure I got it. Let me make sure he said it's a mindset. Whitlock said it creates a mindset, a mindset of entitlement, right? That's what he said. It creates a mindset of entitlement. I want to make sure I, I, I get this dumb stuff right because it's all regurgitated dumb stuff. I just want to make sure. A feeling of I'm old. So he says, he says reparation creates a mindset of a, entitlement and a feeling that I am old. That's what he said. That's what he said. Now, I have a question. I have a question, Mr. Whitlock. I have a question. I do have a question. And I want to make my question known. Sir, why are you not protesting in New York? New York has secured $183 million in compensation for Holocaust victims and their heirs. Not just the victims themselves, because people that tell us you were never a slave. The victims and their heirs. The New York has gotten money for the victims of the Holocaust and their heirs. Right? 
183 million. Why are you, Mr. Whitlock, not protesting that because you said you don't agree with reparations and it's a it's a it creates a have you to, have you told that to your Jewish brothers and sisters? I agree they should I agree that the Jewish community should chase their money down. Go get it. Mr. Whitlock, have you have you protested that? Have you ever gone on and said Holocaust survivors and their heirs need to get the money back because it breeds entitlement? I'm just wondering why everybody's so anti-Adolf's. Is it is it the case that maybe you're just racist? Maybe you're a racist man who hates other who hates black people, Adolf's people. Maybe that's who you are because it does not make any sense if you hate reparations. And I never hear none of y'all who hate reparations. The idea of reparations is gonna make us lazy. Somehow, money and wealth only makes us lazy. Everybody else can go get money and wealth all day long, but for us, it, it's gonna make the Negroes lazy. They don't need no money. Why is money only a bad thing? Why is why is it only when we're old or dead? It's going to make us lazy. You can always find some little step and fetch it to come out. Well, y'all don't need no money. It's just going to make y'all lazy. Y'all don't y'all don't need no money. We don't Negroes don't need no money. It's just going to lay in bed all day. Wait a minute. How come you don't say that to other groups when they go get their reparations? Reparations is not reparations is a, is a tried and true way to do redress. And it's not our fault that we didn't get it when it was old because y'all just didn't wouldn't give it. We asked for it. You said you would and you didn't. Even with Tulsa, we got people who are still alive from the Tulsa massacre and you won't get them anything. I don't hear you, Jason Whitlock, saying, well, you, they really want here to get them. You ain't saying nothing. Why, why are y'all so quiet when other people get Let me tell you something. Holocaust survivors are, are getting $1.4 billion in 2024. So, Mr. Whitlock, if this is how you feel about reparations, if you feel that reparations make people lazy and it make them not want to do nothing and it creates a sense of entitlement, if you believe that people are not going to do anything because they're old, how come you won't get on TV? I want you to get on TV, Mr. Whitlock, if, you are, if you're not a spineless, coward, cowardly man, if you're not a spineless racist. I want you to get on TV and say, no, I don't think Germany should do it. I don't think New York should do it. As a matter of fact, Mr. Whitlock, I want you to take a protest sign down to New York. And then maybe if you are consistent on this issue, we will take you seriously. If you are consistent on this issue, right, maybe we will take you seriously. But from what I see, you don't say this to everybody. If see, see, this is this is what well, this is where this is this, these are the questions you have to ask people because this has happened in this country and other countries. Like New York is chasing down, chasing down money, and the Holocaust didn't happen in this country, right? We have in this country, though, we have also had Japanese reparations, right? We have had Japanese reparations in this country. And I didn't, I don't hear Mr. 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 Uh, uh, Whitlock <laughs> shaking his little, shaking his little fist at the air, talking about we shouldn't have did that. Oh, but they, oh, they will pay y'all. They will pay y'all to get on TV and do stuff that harms the people. And I, at this point, I don't know if you stupid or if you think I'm stupid. I don't know whether you stupid or you just think I'm stupid enough to be like, yeah, you right. We don't need no money. Last thing we need is some money. What? Last thing we need is some wealth. Well, we don't have any and we don't have any because of everything that happened from housing discrimination with redlining and, and sharecropping. And we will, we will, we will use as a commodity by white folk to create wealth and we were not allowed to create our own wealth. And then they stole land from us and the, we didn't uh, farm land. And they stole that. They just plundered us. And we're not supposed to get that back because, because some little random and some little fat face man on TV say what? Who are you? Who are you to say anything about anything? Like, why would that have meaning? He's just projecting the white folk. You know what? I agree with you, sir. Boss, 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 man. Boss man, I agree with you, boss man. I'm right with you. I, I don't think they should get something, boss man, as long as you give me something. As long as you give me a check, boss man, I will absolutely talk against everything you want me to talk against, boss man, because they don't need no money. But I need some money, boss man. Pay me. See, some of these people, as long as they get their individual reparations, they don't care about <laughs> they don't care about anything that happened. They don't care about the lynchings. I put this up the other day. They don't care about all the lynchings in this country. They don't care about that. They don't care about that we had to leave our homes and our properties and escape to different parts of America because we were getting murdered. No, he don't care about that. He doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about his own people. He ought to be ashamed. 
His mama ought to be ashamed of him. Like your parents ought to be ashamed and disgusted. Well, who is your who is your daddy? Like who are these people that raised you to get on TV and talk about what we shouldn't have? Who are these people? Who are your people? Used to be a time you could say, who is your mama? Who is your daddy? Right? Racial terror lynches. All, all of a sudden, none of this stuff matters no more, right? All of a sudden, none of the none of the stuff that happened to us matters. We just got to get out. Well, wait a minute. You don't tell. Nobody told the Japanese. Nobody told it. The Jewish community. Nobody. And I don't think they should have. I think they were all old. But how come all of a sudden with us, we just got to go without wealth? And we got to listen to this person. He shouldn't be able to go anywhere where Negroes shop without somebody shouting him down. We let people get away with way too much stuff. They get to move around and live life and be happy and don't nobody say, and I'm not talking about doing anything violent, but you shouldn't be able to walk around like that. You couldn't walk around as a member of certain communities saying stuff against that community. I ain't serving you in this restaurant. Go somewhere else. Go let Massa feed you. Ain't that who feeds you all the time? Oh, yard man. <laughs> what are we talking about? What are we talking about? I mean, what, 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 are, what are we talking about? I just be wanting to know. And like I said, I'm not staying too long today, but I had to get that out because it, it you know, it's just all of these, it's all the wrong people talking. Like if, if you want to understand why we, Yvette, why we ain't got no fun. I seem like, I feel like we should be father. I feel like we should be doing more. Well, all the wrong people are having a conversation. Y'all, we just let anybody take a microphone and just say, hey, I want to tell you what I feel about this. I thought he talked about sports. Why he, why does he have social commentary with no data, nothing? And this little man who the blaze picked out of the, uh, picked out of the, the cornflakes box said, here, dust them off. Just get his hair right and get his stuff together. Get on, get on out there and talk for us. Say something good for us. <laughs> what is going on? Master give you a bucket or something? Come on now. He always give you a nice bucket or something. The gristle. He, he gave you the gristle from the chicken, a little chicken foot, and some cornbread. I'm going to take that. Come over here messing with us about what, what we're not outraged enough when people betray us. We're just not. Because this is not, this is not a case of this is not a case of somebody just having a different opinion. This he does this these people don't have an opinion. That's why it wasn't based on anything but feeling. This is just a case of I'm going to be a contrarian and I don't care if it hurts the people that I'm from the group. And and the other people I'm not even from the group. But it doesn't it, I don't care if it hurts you. Like this is good for me just to play this contrarian game and that's the game I'm going to play. Right? And we don't, we just kind of let it go and say, well, maybe he got a point. You got to stop doing that. Before you say, well, he might have a point, sit back and think about that. Sit back and think about everything your people have been through. Sit back and look at your account. Before you say he might have a point, I want you to pull up your account. I want you to pull up your online banking. I want you to pull up your investments. And then I want you to ask yourself whether he have a point. I want you to think about how hard you worked in your life. I want you to think about your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, your granddaddy, your great granddad. I want you to think about all those people who worked hard in their life. And then I want you to ask yourself if he got a point. With no data, no facts. He's just up there babbling. Oh, it's always people with half a whatever. I ain't even gonna say that. That's mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you don't even talk right, child. I, anyway, anyway, let, let, let me not let me not be mean. But fam, I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm gonna go straight to the phones. If you all have something to say, like I like I said, I told you I was gonna zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom through the day show. I zoomed as fast as I could. We 15 minutes. I usually go, I go two, I go two, I go an hour and ten, 15. <laughs> but I'm going to if you all want to call in please feel free if you saw the little clip if you saw the whole show I apologize I couldn't get through the whole show I can't get through hearing him talk that long it's a lot and the other little one he don't know what he talking about he just be he just be shadow boxing at the wind it was too much for me and I felt like I was wasting my time but if you caught it and you have some kind of observation please let me know I'm going to go to break we'll come back and we'll if you want to we'll have a conversation if not we'll end it early up to you I'll be back in a few
All right, fam. I am back. I am back. Um, so gonna go to the calls back sooner than back sooner than anticipated. Uh, gonna go to the calls really quickly, ladies and gentlemen. I'm um, going first to. Uh, hold on one second. Oh. Going first to um six one five six one five. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? How you doing? This is Mel. Hey, what's going on, Mel? Um, so I'm not gonna stay long. I, you know, for a long time I just wanted to check and see what Whitlock was talking about. So I went and watched some of his videos. Mm. They're very long. Mm. And so I started trying to figure out what his angle is. And so I listened to him. Okay. And one of his biggest proponents is saying he doesn't agree with racial idolatry which is what a lot of us do in his opinion. So he's against a lot of that. So if you're black and proud, he has a problem. And he, he'll he try to even say that he used to think that way back in the day. He was like, I was big into the Panthers and Malcolm X and all of that. You know who else said, you know who else says that? You, hold on, pa, pa, pause right so pause right quick, because you know who else says what you just said, that they're not into that anymore than they used to be a black Panther? Who does that sound like? That's that man, uh, Clarence, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, he was like, yeah, I'm not really into that racial idolatry. He had to be there when Kyrie Irving was going through it, and he was he had a, what's the Hebrew Israelite on there? And he was like, uh, you know, his biggest problem with the guy that was the Hebrew Israelite was like he's into racial idolatry, and I think that's one of our biggest issues. That's what he was leaning into. Mm. And so... It was a struggle to, like, watch all of that. And I was like, okay, so now I see what his angle is. And especially when that boat brawl happened in Alabama, mm. he was like, you know, he normally goes in on black people when we act a fool and don't pay attention to rules and all that stuff. And when those white folks did that on the dock, he soft shoot the hell out of that conversation. He was like, I'm really scared about this. We don't know what happened. We don't know what was being said. The black man was really animated with his hands. We don't know Not what animated. Happened. Not animated. <laughs> Girl, you know we animated. We animated. We mad or 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 upset. I mean, or happy. So like, I don't I don't understand what he was trying to do there. But either way, they violated the rules. So the way that he did it, I definitely turned on that episode just to see how he was going to respond. And it was super soft. And so I was like, okay, so this guy really don't love us. And he leans into Christian values. So he said we're supposed to have Christian values, not be racial idolaters. So my only thing is, why don't you? Um, call them out on it though because christians say a lot about being christians and forgiving and all that kind of stuff but they also overlook atonement mm. you can't say i'm gonna stop doing something wrong to you and then not do something to make it right you gotta normally work harder to do it right hold, hold on there's a there's a there's a that verse is in the bible that verse is in the bible say if i have harmed you i give you four times more if i have wronged you whatever that's in the bible i don't know if you're gonna be a real christian if you're not gonna cherry pick that's in the bible people love to talk about all the values in the bible that's what people, i'm saying yeah I never, I never see anybody go back at him with that, and that's what I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out why people are consistently letting him just say Christian, Christian, Christian. I said, but yeah, 
you a BS Christian because I expect you to do the hard thing. The hard thing is actually doing the work. And so that's the that's the only thing I, I recognize. But I'll let you go and talk to somebody else. Thanks for taking my call. No, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. People love to talk to people. People love to cherry pick the book, boy. Let me tell you. Uh, the thing the thing about the Bible is that justice is in the Bible more than love. They mentioned the Bible mentions justice more than love. And y'all see, ooh, I said, mm, that's something. Anyway, I'm going to my next call, 971. 971, where you calling from? What's on your mind? What's your name? Uh, hey, Yvette. Uh, hey. This is Eddie. Um, I was... Uh, oh. Can you hear me? Uh-huh, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I, I attended the, uh, the second, uh, the second AOS conference. I was the one okay. with the pink shirt that bought you the drink. Okay. Sure but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, anyways, um, yeah, just called to let you know that I love your show. Um, Thank love you. Um, and, uh, we already purchased our, uh, our, our tickets for the hotel. Uh, okay. We dropped it on, uh, on uh, uh what was that instagram that's right instagram uh-huh. yeah uh caught in the middle of the night anyways um yeah i don't really give uh, jason whitlock too much uh attention honestly though he's, he's a retard um i, I kind of feel like um adam hughes too or is it, is it adam you know adam uh coleman hughes that's, that's oh yeah that's the one in the diaper yeah that's him idiot idiot um yeah, I don't, I don't give him too much time. But uh, I had a question, though. Um, Go ahead. Uh, just a, I'm going to get off the phone and keep it quick. Hey, did, um, you know, I we, we find, I signed up for the uh, for the, the membership, but mm-hmm. I uh, my email address, I got that wrong. Um, is there somebody that I can contact to correct that or somebody could drop it in the chat? Or, or, or he got his email. That I can... <laughs> hey, fam, D-mail, D- just, just if you're on Twitter, just DM me, and I'll help you get it right. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't have Twitter, but uh. I mean, okay. don't have no Twitter. Um, well, just, we'll just, you, um, you, well, just email me at, at Yvette Carnell at Ados Foundation. Can you do that? Yvette Carnell at Ados Foundation org. Dot org. Okay. Yeah, okay. we'll do. Love you. Got to pass to the next caller. Um, love you. That's it. Appreciate you, fam. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, and like I said, all of that, all of those things, all of the <laughs> are. If you want to be with us in New Orleans in October, the, we hey we haven't announced ticket yet, but we want to announce early to get yourself ready. And everybody kept asking. I wasn't even going to put out, um, you know, we weren't trying to put out the hotel this early, but everybody just kept asking, is there an official hotel? Is there an official hotel? So we felt the need to put that out. Again, use the link um, on ADOS Org. That's our official ADOS Foundation account. Um, to, to, to link so that we get credit for like having booked you there so because that affects the price um, so please <laughs> please use the official link uh, going now to 857 857 what's your name where you calling from what's on your mind hi there how are you you're back can you hear me well I can hear you good how you doing Thank you so much. I'm calling from Boston, Massachusetts. I want to say hello to the whole Adolf family. How are you all? I'm glad you guys are all tuned in tonight. Um, a few things. I've been watching you for many years. Okay. Um, and I want to say thank you so much for your great work. Also, Yvette, a lot of the stuff that you have to say that's going on in this country is absolutely true. Myself, I have family roots in Alabama from one parent and the other parent from Europe, Mm. but their parents is from the Caribbean. And you're absolutely right about us being locked out, the workforce, us being locked out of housing, us being locked out of many different things, the environment, because as myself, I am almost 40 years old this weekend. Oh, congratulations. um, Happy birthday. Everything is a crisis, Mm. down to Hispanics beating you out. It's true. Caribbean people, African people, it is absolutely true. They get the jobs. You get picked because of the name. Um, you're entitled because of your name, because of your heritage. You're absolutely right. Everything that you have to say, mm. and I'm telling the Adolf family, believe these things. It is absolutely true. I am calling from Massachusetts, from Boston, and these things actually happen every single day. Every time you write your name down on the paper, every time you apply yourself for anything, you are being questioned 
you are being shunned. You are being locked out. Mm. And that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Mm. Continue to pass on the word. And Ados, good luck. And please stand up and teach your children, teach your grandchildren, teach everyone to always speak up and to never stand down. Thank you. Oh, thank you, fam. Thank you, fam. And let me just say, let me just say, I appreciate you. And the last part of what she said was so important. I believe that some of these people get away. So many of these people get away with what they say because you don't know enough to, like, understand that, like, this person is lying or they don't know enough to have this conversation because we haven't done the work or you haven't done the work or read the books or read the long-form articles or whatever the case may be. And you have to instill that in your kids to where if they walk up on a Jason Whitlock, they know how to, they know how to embarrass him in, in front of a group of people. With like using information and data, so that part is so important. Um, going now to four four three four four three. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hi, that long time listener. Hey. Uh, Jason Woodlock is idiot. Is that? Do you remember when the um, the Queen died, right? And Caribbeans were falling out left and right, uh, sad about the Queen dying. Notice how they always they always talk to smack about African Americans, and when the Queen died, they were all falling out. I remember. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know what? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I think it's that somebody said it was Jamaicans. And Jamaicans, don't be mad at me. But somebody said they have a thing for Celine Dion. I never knew. But go on, Phil. I'm sorry. <laughs> With Jason, well, Jason Whitlock doesn't realize when he's, when he's pushing marriage and ma marriage for the uh, African American community, AD West community, is that you had about two generations of men that were incarcerated. You had deindustrialization of the inner cities, the offshoring of jobs. Mm -hmm. So, how can you have marriage without the economic floor being there so that black men can provide to these families? But he never brings that up. He never brings up the Clinton era neoliberal policies. Oh my God. Well, he never brings up any policies yeah. for the most part. Like, it's just like everything. Like, it's such a one-sided thing. This is what you Negroes have done wrong. And nothing about what causes that. Like, what are the strains? So if you tell me, I believe in marriage, what are the strains on marriage among ADOS people, right? Like, what pulls at that? I don't want to talk about what y'all see amongst basketball players and, and all that stuff. I'm not talking about the, I'm not talking about these aberrations. I'm talking about in your life, people who love each other. What are the and who have who have decided to get married? What were the strains? If you had parents that got married, what were the strains that you saw? Like that's what we don't ask about. And it's just kind of, you know, that's 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 the that's the problem. So, you know, I agree with you. I we don't ask those questions. Question. Somebody, <laughs> yeah, they were, I thought I heard. Well, listen, let me just. <laughs> when they, when, when Celine fell out, she didn't fall out. But when they found out Celine had the thing that made her body lock up, whatever it was, they said that the, they said that the the Jamaicans and Haitians was losing their mind. And I said I did not know. And I I think Celine is a wonderful singer. I ain't got nothing against Celine, but I did not know that they had deified that that the, the, the I did child, I did not know it. Um. Yeah, the the Colonel report is absolutely phenomenal. I I I you know I have like two copies because I messed up the other one. Um, so yeah, I did I did not know child. I did not know the love for Celine. But let me go on. Uh, four six nine four six nine. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Perfect. Hey, what's up, you ladies? Uh, they calling from Dallas. I last called about probably two or three years ago. Okay, uh, you, you better mention being sports and, and media and. I know, well, last time I caught, I was saying how so many of our inner city kids think they're going to be big-time athletes and how that's, you know, falsified versus looking at the data. But it's interesting you bring up who you brought up because, like I said, my background is also radio and a conservative radio. And whenever, you know, you see these stars or, you know, we've been talking about Monique and all these different things, mm -hmm. I always just go back to one question. Who pays these people? Whenever you go back to that question, it's like that, that answers everything, you, and you don't take them serious. Once you know who do they get their money from, who do they get their platform from, just like Tone did, and this is so powerful. When he did it about on the guys of the podcast, I love him getting promoted by the gambling sites and the alcohol mm -hmm. sites. Like, once you get down to who's promoting these people, you don't even look at them the same way. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nope. You don't even you you don't even you don't even you don't even think about it. You don't even. I mean, it's just like, well, you know who you're dealing with. 
Like, you know what kind of monster's in front of you or what kind of person is in front of you or what they're willing to do, right? So they may they may not know, whatever the case may be, but, like, I know what you're willing to do now to make sure that that money keeps coming exactly. in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, like, yeah, I cannot take you serious. Like, once I know where you get your money, who's sponsoring you, if you want to use that word, then you, I, know, I know where, I know who your mouthpiece and who's in your pocket. So it's like... Those people right there, you can't even take them seriously. That's just, just kind of want to throw that, that perspective in there. You have a good night. You have a good one, too. Yeah, I, and I think, you know, with, with some people, you know, I just have to ask, like, how much is enough? Like, what, what, do, you, what do you crave? Like, in your life? And, and these are things that people don't ask enough. Like, for me, I want community. Right. I want community. I want I want I want family who's happy and healthy. I would like people to come and, you know, to Thanksgiving. Nobody's been driven to, you know, any kind of severe addiction or, or arrested. You know, everybody's just happy doing their own thing, living out whatever their dream is to live out in their life. Maybe sometimes it's more successful than others. Everybody has bumps or whatever. But that would be my dream. I think for some people like it, wealth is like a cancer. There's never enough. So it doesn't matter what you did in sports and what you did over here is just, I got to get more money. I got to get more money. I got to get more money. And it's not about what money is supposed to be, which is stabilization. Even in terms of what marriage is supposed to be, these are supposed to be two families coming together, even more than just two people who are in love. You can love whatever. It's supposed to be two families coming together. We bring together, you bring together what your family has, I bring together what my family has, and it's not just an expression of how I feel about one individual person, how they feel about me. It's an expression of wealth because these families are coming together and combining their wealth. It was never meant to be just an expression of, of feelings and emotions and valentines. <laughs> Everybody gonna learn. Um, three three six. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, Yvette. Hey. My name is Tyron Johnson from the Charlotte Metro area, and it's my first time calling on. I appreciate you for opening up. Oh, appreciate you. How you doing? I'm doing good. I have two things when it comes to commentators on reparations that I really want to address, and it, it really bothers me. Okay. And I have a loving spirit. So I'm going to go ahead and just believe these people are just really ignorant mm. because if not, it's extremely devious. Um, like, the whole argument for reparations is because we haven't been honored. We have Our constitutional rights have not been honored. And, you know, we talk about eminent, everybody talks about eminent domain, but when a lot of these political um, commentators who are speaking on reparations or they're speaking on whatever but they're mentioning reparations they never understand that like no one's asking for a handout or anything we're talking about uh millions of people whose constitutional rights have not been honored mm -hmm. like and i think and no one checks them for that like i don't see it in the comments like a lot of people just not enough people are checking them for that mm -hmm. like for example like you know just talking about the eminent domain it's like so it involves various factors, you know, including, you know, property market value, current use, any potential loss of business or relocation costs incurred by the property owner. So the reason why is that, like, it's not they, as in racist individuals, are the people who designated us as property. It's in the law. It's still in the law today, actually. Those cases, um, lawyers still um, reach back sometimes to get precedence in those laws. It's still active today. Like, we did not designate ourselves property. Mm -hmm. So us being property and then now being free, we were not able to literally use our bodies. They are the slave. My, my, my great, 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 great grandparents and grandmothers weren't able to literally use their bodies to create an income for themselves, create a life for themselves and their family. And, you know, when you get people out here talking as if reparations is this thing that, oh, we're just begging for and whatnot, you know, I, like, mm, some, of, I, some of ought to really check them on that. Well, it's never, that, and it's never considered it's, begging when it's somebody else. When, every, when anybody else asks for reparations and says, you know, I, when any other community has done it, it's never considered begging. It's only considered begging when we do it. And my problem with us is that we buy into the racist rhetoric that it's begging. And to many of us, it's one thing if white folk do it, we got to get them in check, that's fine. 
it's not fine, but I understand that fight. That's a fight that really makes sense to me because of because we're here because of what what white supremacy and white racist institutions did. So that makes sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me that how many of us are listening to somebody who would say that. That's supposed to be it should only be white folk listening if white racist folks listening if that's what Whitlock has to say. And we we just be like, well he has a right to his opinion. Somewhere along the line we decided that people have a right to an uninformed opinion. Jason Whitlock is only Jason Whitlock because somewhere in his life People allowed him to say that stuff and sit among them. You could not sit among a community of Jewish Americans or Jewish people anywhere in the world and say they are not owed reparations. You would never be welcome there again. And for some reason, we lack the self-respect to exclude Jason Whitlock from every place that he should that he goes. Go ahead, fam. I'm sorry. No, I appreciate you because I listen to you week and week, um, and this is the first time I'm getting on the line, but it's I, like, I'm trying my best in my little, very, very small world, you know, trying my best to attack, not attack, but no, no, yeah, go on attack when it comes to, when, when people want to say stupid things. Mm-hmm. Like, the second thing I want to address, really stupid thing, is when people talk about um, who's going to pay for it, oh, my tax dollars isn't going towards this, and, you know, and those are definitely more so, like, just, just blatantly just uninformed people. Some of them are actually Confederates and racists. But the issue with that is, is like, well, there's actually measures for that already. Um, do you and it come it's, and those measures were given to the U.S. Treasury Department. Like, when it comes to where the money's going to come from, why does anybody ever talk about the fact that the United States, over the years, has done gold auctions? And go and that money goes to people who have been two entities that's been financially damaged for whatever reason. Um, if I can actually get yes, right here. So they have my bad. I just want to make sure I get the legal. Th- okay, so it says under 31 U.S. Code. Stock one one six. The Secretary of Treasury has the authority to buy and sell gold in ways that benefit the public interest. So, no, this is we're not talking about taxes. We're not talking about um, asking citizens and random. Um, gotta watch my words. And just random individuals um, giving us money or anything like that. We're not. We're not trying to steal from nobody. We're going to. The entity that owes us, which is the federal government, because Congress had a play in it, the, ju- the judicial branch had a play in it, all branches had a play in it, yeah. all institutions had a just, play just in it. Just say every, just say from, from from the local to the from the local to the state to the national, everybody was complicit. <laughs> yes. So my thing is, is, like we already got the code, we already got we already got the the Constitution on our side. So what in the world is going on with these political commentators and people just saying stupid stuff and, and when it comes to reparations and people just eat it up or their arguments? Well, make, well, make, well. Let me tell. Let me tell you. Words, well, let me tell you what I let me tell you what I think it is. The the part of the, there's an easy way to keep you from ever getting to the solution, right? The solution is reparations, but the way to keep you to ever getting to the solution being reparations is to just keep you in the in to keep you with debating, right? So if if we can't ever form consensus, or if we believe really, I feel like the consensus is formed among, among most of us. If 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 somebody's able to get on TV and make you believe and make white folk believe too that there is no agreement, that we're still debating, that we haven't reached an answer yet, that's part of the play. Part of the play is to present it as if, hey, we just, we're not sure. We don't know. It's a lot of disagreement. Uh, we not we haven't reached anything yet, right? Um, and so, to me, that's part of the propaganda. That's part of how this propaganda is working, is just to convince people that we haven't, we, and convince other ADOS people, and I don't know what Jason Whitlock is, I don't know his background, but to convince ADOS people, listen, there, there's a lot of debate going on, right? As long as you can keep people fighting, you'll never, you'll never get them to where they can sit down and say, what should we do? You just, you just be fighting. And that's, and that's a way to just make sure that we miss this moment. That's all. Thank you, man. 
because I, I'm 27, I'm young, and I'm trying to find out where my angle in all this is. And, like, I just want to see more people. When I see people going back and forth online, I just want to see more people bring out the Fifth, Con- the fifth Amendment, more people bring out the 31 U.S. Code 5116. No, we're not. No, you're not. We're not asking for your tax dollars, idiot. Like, come on now. We're not stupid. But let me just stupid. say this. Let like, me just say this. Even if we were, let's, even if we are asking for your tax dollars, so what? Like, if a country owes a, if owes debts or whatever, then the country pays them and you pay as a taxpayer. You may be a person who doesn't believe in war at all. Like, I, I, there's a lot of wars that I would prefer we have not have been in. I still don't get to say, you know what, how much of, how much of my taxes is going to war? I'm going to take that off because I don't want to pay that. You don't get to do that. Like, that's just not how we do it. If something is old, I didn't hear anybody when, I didn't, nobody, nobody howled at the moon and fell out when this country paid reparations to the Japanese. As a matter of fact, the Congressional Black Caucus helped them get it. Like, nobody fell out when Guam got reparations. Nobody fell out when, when, when America's helping the Jewish community get reparations. And only, it's only when it's us that you say, my, I wasn't here. My family didn't do it. I don't want to pay it. Like, you just, you're just an impediment to justice. So, so what if it, so what if it came from your, or comes from your tax dollars? So what? It's a lot of stuff that comes from your tax dollars that you would prefer not to pay for, whether it's defense spending, whether it's other parts of a budget. You may be a right-winger who don't want to pay for welfare or whatever. That ain't going to change what your tax dollar do. That ain't going to change that at all. So if this country has a debt, you just owe the debt. We don't do a la carte taxes where you say, I want the spaghetti and I want the cornbread and a little bit of bean. And we don't do it that way. It's, 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 it, the, the country has a debt that it should have paid a long time ago. It hasn't paid. It still owes it now with interest and it has to pay. That's all you should be concerned about. And if, 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 that, if you see it any other way, you're a racist. I'm sorry. Even if you're ADOS, I'm sorry. I'm not really sorry. <laughs> Thank you, fam. I appreciate, I appreciate you. You have a good one, all right? All right, now, bye. <laughs> Going right now to um, do 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 I take the instructions that you gave earlier um, for our family that um, those uh, young, young men that think um, not as strong as they should be, they need some kind of training, some kind of class. And I think with you as a woman, a female, a sister, uh, it gives you great power to uh, give us that kind of guidance and share with us and encourage us uh, that we have that kind of need. Right, because see, like I think if you were to have um, a conversation with that brother in the public, you'll be able to share with him some things that possibly he haven't had the opportunity to experience. Because you know, in our experience, we got a lot of uh, single family um, realities, and when you look at the surge of homosexuality and lesbianism in our society, uh, we can see that we got to make some real serious adjustments. I, I don't hold on. I don't. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think lesbianism has anything to do with what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I heard it, and when I heard it, I know it sounds good and it sounds right for our family. And I think many times when we have that kind of instruction, we kind of glance over it. And I just wanted to stick a tack in it, if I could, and um, encourage you to continue to encourage us, in particular those of us who are the, um, the male species. Because, you know, we need that kind of uh, love coming from the sisterhood from a respectable way. Because all of us got caught, you know, whether you're rich or poor, all of us got caught and all of us still in the snare. But it's up to us to get ourselves out of this. And I just wanted to say that because when you were talking, it just hit me and I, I was cooking, so I just had to say something to you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you for calling in. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's all I can say. Hey, I think some of y'all. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell who's new to the show. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, you know, and I disagree. The other part I disagree with is it's not we're gonna get ourselves out of this. Like, um, no. Um, like there's a reason why everybody goes to Capitol Hill because that's where the money is. Okay. Um, I, I, fam, I don't know. I don't know, fam. I don't know. I see. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
<laughs> like how did how did how did how did homosexuality become the, the scourge? <laughs> I don't know. Why fam? I don't know. I appreciate him calling in though, but I don't know. Don't ask me, fam. I do not know. <laughs> Shall we tell him? I fam, fam. He could give him time. Give him time to relax into <laughs> the show, fam. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Y'all. Are... <laughs> You too can buy your nice ADOS mug at ADOSfoundation.org. Regardless of your regardless of your sexuality. <laughs> Let me stop. <coughs> oh <coughs> I'm going to the next call, y'all. Y'all play too much. Um 925-925. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Oh. What's up? This is P Easy calling out of Oakland. Uh, can you hear me clearly? I can hear you good, fam. How you doing? I'm doing great. I didn't get to catch all of your broadcasts, but I know that you was on point. You always, you know, uh, Chef Carnell. Uh, so, oh, I appreciate uh, but you. I did, uh, yeah, I did catch enough of it to to, to uh, understand where you was coming with it. And when it comes to Delano Squires and uh, the other guy, uh, Coleman, um, Coleman Hughes, but if you notice, his name is Coleman Cruz Hughes. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. He was from, he's from somewhere else. Yeah, he that. dropped the Cruz. There you go. So um, that's why people are using the term, you know, tether more because that's what they are. They look like us, tether to all of our accomplishments, our culture, but speak against it. When it came to a reparations uh, panel, they had um, Candace Owens, who, who lineage is not from here, Coleman Cruz Hughes, who lineage is not from here, and a bunch of people cosplaying Ados to speak against it. And then it's to that uh, audience. Delano Squires is on the blaze. He's also been published in the Federalist Papers, part of the Heritage Foundation. So, uh, unfortunately, what we don't do, we don't do a lot of uh, paperwork uh, check, too, because we have convinced that when you do a paperwork and a temperature check that that's xenophobic, you know what I mean? No, no, where's your family from? Uh, you know what I mean? So we're just supposed to be accepting of everyone. And what we need to do better is go on the offensive, right? Because we already know that they're going to crap on us. So I tell people, go on the offensive, like how you were asking them. You know, people say, I'm against it and, and, and all this other stuff. Make them break down why they're against it. They already heard why you're for it. They know that the arguments are legitimate. So they try to muddy up the uh, waters or, you know, what they call the gish galloping, right? Throwing so much stuff against the wall. Now you arguing for something that's like, and you've been so far removed from the dollar amount. So that's what a lot of them like to do, and many of us engage in that. No, put them on the offensive, right? You were never slaves. Neither was these uh, Jewish heirs, right? They weren't gassed in a chamber, but they got them. So ask them, hey, why, if you don't believe Edo should get it, why do you believe the Jewish people should get it, right? Japanese got reparations. Why aren't you protesting that? But stick on the question. Hammer them with the question and make them explain. I, I they agree. they got to show their hypocrisy. Or yeah, or they got to back down. And, 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 which they're already showing. and let me say one, let me say one other thing, fam. Them. Let me yeah. say one other thing while you're talking. One other thing that happens is, you know, if you're going, if 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 I can't get reparations because I was never a slave, what you're saying is that nobody should get inheritance, right? That I don't get the inheritance that my people were owed. Well, like I've said before, if you're opposed to inheritance, then let's just say nobody gets inheritance. Whatever was left to you goes back to the government. Okay, that means you don't get what your mama left, daddy left, grandfather left, all of you, all of you white folks and people of color who are who are inheriting all this money. If you don't believe in inheritance, because this is what this is, this is what reparation is an inheritance. If you don't believe in inheritance, then that means you don't inherit nothing. We have a zero, we have a hundred percent inheritance tax in this country, then if you don't believe in inheritance. And that means everybody goes back to zero after their parents or grandparents or whoever dies. It goes right back into the system. If show me you believe that then. Like let's stand if you want to stand on that, stand on that. I bet you none of them will. Absolutely not. And what what is meritocratic? Let's just say that you uh, you know your your uh, dad happens to be wealthy, right? And then he passes the company on to you. 
these are the same people yelling meritocracy. You didn't work for that. Mm -hmm. And then you would make the argument, yeah, but it was my dad. My dad worked for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're not your dad. Mm -hmm. You didn't work for it. So you can't be wagging your finger about meritocracy and then you say, oh, I don't want a handout, but you're taking handouts from your parents, right? Mm -hmm. You don't say, hey, dad, don't give me that new car. I want to work and earn my car. You're willing to take a handout. Then you do like Elon Musk do and go to the government for handout. But if, if we say anything, it's socialism, you know, and and when uh, Whitlock and all of these buffoons are talking about family values and all this other type of stuff, there were plenty of Adolf's families together. And what happened? They were still getting burned down, mm -hmm. still getting harassed, still being subjugated, still being denied loans with their family values. And um, not only mm -hmm. that, when is he going to call out the illegal immigration, right? Unfettered illegal immigration is not. I would have thought he. I would have thought he would have said something exactly. about that, considering how conservative he is. I thought I would have thought he would. He's never said nothing about that. He's no. He is not saying anything. That should be the most pressing issue because when you're talking about family, right? You need to be able to provide economically to have some sort of sustenance for your family. If these illegals are coming over here draining resources, depressing and stagnating the wages, and then you're saying, oh, yeah, people don't want to get married. Why the heck would they get married when they know that they can't, um, you know, uh, sustain their family? Then when they have kids, and you say, oh, they had kids out of wedlock. Pete this, uh, um, Ms. Garnell, like, why is nobody talking about these illegal migrants coming over here? It, just in New York alone, just uh, last year, they had over 4,000 babies. 4,000, some people, now there's a re-debate on, should you use the term anger baby? If, if, look, if you can go around calling people the N-word, uh, you, you, you can take uh, being called an anchor baby, right? But no one is talking about that, right? They're, they're draining resources. I'm surprised uh, it was uh, Eric Adams <laughs> passing out $1,000 uh, cars. They're getting uh, free e-bikes. And it's like, oh, well, well, well they just got to figure out how to work. At least they're working. And, and, and then people are convinced that it's like they're coming over here to do the jobs that no one wants to do. There's something called uh, Cities for Action. Look it up. They're training them to not do jobs that people don't want to do. They're training them to be in media so they can talk against well, that, well, that 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 uh, that argument that argument went out the door with well, H1B visas. The argument that nobody wants to do like ADOS can't even get a foot in in tech because of H1Bs up to a large part like because of immigration. We talked about read the other 1% Indians in America. We did a book club on it. Like like I don't I don't even know how anybody still uses that talking point anymore. But I I'll give you I give you a little water to, to uh, uh, wrap it up and then we'll go on. But good call, fam. For the... hmm. Okay, yeah, I, I actually uh, someone um, an elder woman I was talking to uh, earlier today actually in her fifties from Los Angeles. She actually made that argument, and I got a little infuriated because I was like, look. <laughs> Do you not remember what Nuri Martinez was saying and, and, and all of the stuff? Um, some of the migrant gangs coming and bombing uh, the people out. So some of our people are uh, using these same talking points. But when it comes to the um, illegal immigration specifically, it's antithetical to the conservative values that they're talking about, of, you know, uh, building up the family structure um, and uh, being able to like uh mitigate crime etc like because they are committing a lot of crime and they're all just lumped up into one city when people say what about chicago they immediately think black but they don't think about how many um the latino gangs is way bigger and way more organized out there but when it comes to crime and um kids out yeah, it's of always like look at what the blacks are doing in look at what the negroes are doing to chicago <laughs> Could you repeat that? I didn't hear that. No, I said it's always like, look at what the Negroes are doing to Chicago. You know, nothing sticks to anybody but us. Like Colombians, you know, in terms of the whole cocaine thing, that they if you see somebody, they don't get they don't get they don't get a uh, tag with that at all. Everything gets tagged with us and don't ever child anyway. But I'll let you finish up, fam. 
Okay, yeah, and, I, and I'm a, and I'm a land. Um, yeah, and, and and you're absolutely right. Look at the Irish got a mafia, Italian got a mafia, Japanese got a mafia, the Asian uh, um, uh, parlors, Colombian, all of these things. We have no gun ma manufacturer, but it's like you know who we should paint as the face of crime. You know what I mean? These people have entities and organizations where it's organized crime, which is actually even worse because it's covert and you have a system uh, that the government and other uh, legislators get involved to facilitate it, but you're worried about uh, the, the one guy on the corner that was sold uh, uh, less than an ounce of weed when the weed dispensaries is run by non-black people that are uh, selling tons of weed. You know, and uh, I'll land with this one. When it comes with the reparations and everyone talking about, uh, you know, uh, Jason Whitlock is known for thumping the Bible and talking about Christian this and Christian that. Just a quick scripture before I land. The wicked borrow and do not repay but the righteous give generously psalm 37 21 Go ahead. You know what i mean and it's not about borrowing they took you know so they should definitely be repaying i'll land with that thank you so much thank for you fam. i appreciate you thank you thank you i appreciate you yeah i appreciate you i appreciate you um yeah it's a lot it's it's, and that's not the only bible term that sounds like that and it's just, it's just a lot of justice in the bible but people just like to skip over 662 662 what's your name where you calling from what's on your mind well, good evening, Yvette. Hey, how you doing? Adult number one. I just wanted to say that uh, you're definitely one of my sheroes. Thank you. And uh, I kind of, kind of want to pick your brain if I can. Okay. I'm, I'm really very uh, outrageous, and I'm sure a lot of us are. As we see these American Triple K people not complaining about the fact that their taxes are going to, you know, these illegals through the Democrat Party and Jim Crow Joe, as well as all this money that's been given to all of these other wars. What I'm trying to figure out, how can we infuse that issue as to a talking point for our reparations claim? Well, I, I, think, I think that issue is more of a, um, a black agenda claim. Um, than a reparations okay. claim. The reparations is just, it is what it is. This is what's owed. I think, I think that, that issue fits more into a mass incarceration case. So what I mean is they're, they're, the, the, way, the reason that they can put so many ADOS, especially ADOS men in prison, is because they have replacement for them in the labor market. You have to remember before, before there were Mexicans picking oranges, there were ADOS men picking oranges, right? So when people says they want to do you the work that you all don't want to do, no, we did the work before they were here. The maids were ADOS women before before um, Guadalupe got here, right? So we're not saying that's not it. But when you look at mass incarceration, there would be no way to warehouse this many ADOS men in prison if there were not if there was not other routes to have cheap labor so now you have two routes for cheap labor you have ADOS men who can make stuff in jail and not and, and not get really paid for it right and then you have cheap labor outside of the jail but what what used to be the case is that there was only so many there was still incarceration there was still even before there was convict leasing but not at this level because you needed some of them outside right you needed some of them to be outside and do some of the work that had to be done outside. So that had to, you had to, you couldn't do all of that. Now you don't need, you don't need that. You can, you can put them all in jail, right? But I mean, you can put as many as you can in prison because we can every day somebody's coming over the border who can do that work, um, and or be trained to do that work. So and even in terms of labor, you talk about when you talk about immigration, it, it lowers when you talk about immigration on the low end. We're talking about easily exploited labor, right? It lowers the wage floor because those people are not going to tell. They're exploited by capitalism. They're exploited by white capital. They're exploited by big corporations. So they're not going to say anything. You can pay them whatever. Well, how do you think you're going to fight with a union or fight to get higher wages or fight for a better contract with that kind of flow and, and with that kind of flow of cheap labor into the country that's also going to be exploited? So that becomes the conversation. You still there, Carl? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So that's I, the kind of thing. You were going in and out, but yes. Okay. 
Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Okay, fine. That's that's a very interesting point. And uh, like I said, my, my other question would be, as far as, like I said, how do we infuse that talking point? And I hope I'm not beating a, uh, a dead horse. That I'm giving up and I'm not. In regards to making people feel outraged and say, look, you're giving all this money to all these other groups and people, especially the illegals, but yet you're denying the one group of people who are owed this money from the government. And I've been trying to just kind of craft a conversation in order to infuse that, you know, into something that's precise that would pretty much go along with the reparations claim. And so that's why I'm kind of picking your brain there. If I'm, like I said, I'm not going in circles. Well, well I'll, 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 I want to, I want to hurt, I want to finish the show, but I'm, I'm, I'll answer you offline though, because you might be able to hear me better then, because I think maybe there's an interference when you say it was cutting off. So, but I will answer you. Um, I, and and I'll, 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 I'll let you go now and I'll answer you offline, but I appreciate the comment. The main thing that I would say is that what has to, like, listen, the problem isn't, first of all, that they don't hear us. The problem is that we have not, and this is why this is why going to join ADOS.com is important. This is why joining the movement is important. This is why coming to our trainings is important. This is why, you know, joining a chapter is important once you become a member. Because, and we roll out chapters, because because it's not a matter of that, like, they don't know that this argument exists or that they don't know that this conversation exists. That's not what's happening. What's happening is that they're telling you, it's kind of like what, 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 um, I, who was it? LBJ told A. Philip Randolph, is that who it was? No, I'm going, child, I'm going all the way back. <laughs> but like, no, 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 no. It was, oh, I got, who was it? Oh, anyway, somebody. Um, it was just like, you, you, you got to make me do it. Politicians respond to pressure and not applause. I've always said that. And the question becomes, the thing is, it's not that we're not making the right argument or we're not connecting one argument to the other argument. There's a good argument um, in favor of not having open borders, um, in favor of citizenship mattering. The problem is that we have not put together the movement that can force people to pay attention to the arguments the, that we make. It's not that the arguments aren't good. It's that we haven't put forth the movement to say you have to listen to us. And that that becomes um, that becomes that becomes the big issue. Um, I'm going to probably my last call. I'm going to 501 501. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Chicago, Illinois. Hey. Hey, Jay from Chicago. What's hey, going on? how you doing? Pretty good. How you, <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? Yvette, I just wanted to say I love the show. I really hardly love you and Tone. Um, oh, thank you. You know, I'm a college grad. I went to an HBCU in Little Rock, Arkansas mm -hmm. called Philander Smith. So I know what an Adolph's education is. Especially <laughs> 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 uh, on a, a <laughs> collegiate level uh, with the funds that we had. Um, and, I, and my story is just so much with you and especially what Tom talks about his last uh, show uh, just dealing with how much it costs to live in America and you know how we you know we do need reparations because you know we, we have bills to pay you know <laughs> you know eight hours people want to go on vacations and you know, you you want to live that American dream, and I think you you talked about that before. You know, I want to have a Christmas. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and um, I, I'm just, I'm, just, you know, I, I don't know what it is. And just getting on your topic uh, with Jason Whitlock, uh, with Tone talked about the gambling. I fell back from Jason Whitlock because I was like. They are promoting gambling all over. And Tom had two or three shows where you talked about gambling and how mm -hmm. that's actually going to destroy Adolf's mm -hmm. and how they market that to us. And I saw it with Jason, I was like, I kind of want to write him an email and kind of talk about that because how you talk about crystal values, but you are promoting gambling, the daily you are, 
uh, Republicans and just, I mean, he just spews a bunch of nonsense. Now, don't get me wrong with that. I like it when he just talks about sports, but when it comes to politics, it needs to be just a bad and <laughs> Well, why can't he just stay I mean, in a lane? My That's wish. my thing. Like, why can't he just stay in a lane? That's my thing with people. I think because people think, well, well, well politics is provocative. That don't mean you got to come over here. <laughs> if you don't, defensive, like, why can't you just, everybody's so greedy. Like, I would never talk about sports other than how it impacts politics. I would never go, I would never, you're never going to have me having a show on talking about football, basketball, basketball, none of that, because that's not my lane. Why don't people just pick a lane of expertise or whatever and just stay there? That just, that's what never makes sense to me he's very good in that sports lane and before I hang up I just want to say uh, uh, is your book club on Patreon because I it's I'm on Patreon I fell in love with you back during COVID when you were talking about Tariq Nasheed and that <laughs> stupid conference he had during COVID and I'm like who is this lady from Atlanta <laughs> she's like my sister fun times like, who is I'm trying to Fun time, fun time. No, I said fun time, but it is on Patreon. The book club is on Patreon. We just did the other um, Indians in America, the other one percent. Um, it might be a while before before we do the next one, though, because I have to. Um, you know, it's a lot of stuff that's going to be planning the conference and different things. Going to take a lot of my attention, and we're still rolling out chapters. Right. You know, stuff like that. But that was a great book, even if you weren't a part of the book club. You can go read it now and still go look at the book club. The book club was two parts. Um, so yeah, it's. A, but to answer your question, is on it is on Patreon now. Okay, cause I, I'm I'm reading your books. Um, I got I got making the Hispanic. I got the half has never been told. Look and, at you. I bought the other one. Uh, they were her property. Mm -hmm. And uh, as much as I want to unsubscribe from Tone, cause Tone tells too much damn truth. <laughs> <laughs> I have to resubscribe because I want to <laughs> live in that fantasy too. But Tone just oh my god. But then I love you. I'm gonna try love to make that. it to the conference. Uh, if I gotta catch an Amtrak, um, I'm still on paying student loans. I got seventy two thousand, so I understand. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with um, you. <laughs> I want to try to make that in off conference. I understand, and that's part of the reason we 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 tried to let people know early. We didn't want to spring it on you because we know you know what what the, what the money looked like. You know what I mean? So so you know we 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 would feel like why are you release it early? You know before you get all the stuff because we gotta let people know early. People have to be able to plan. And like I said before on the previous show, part of the reason is New Orleans because let's say you only get to go one place this year. I don't want you to go say I don't want you, I don't want you necessarily have to choose between like doing good politics and like having some time away with your family. This way you can kind of do both of them or just have some time to yourself. You can do both things. You can have a good time and you can you can do political work um, and be with the Ados family all in one place. So that was a lot of the thinking that a lot of us and the people in the org in, inside Ados HQ, you know, went back and forth because we went back and forth on stuff about where to go and how to do it for a very long time and shout out to everybody inside ADOS HQ we battled with that, debated that for a minute before we came to this so a lot of work went into it So, yeah you guys do, you guys do amazing work um, you guys and, and, and which is funny why won't um, I don't know uh, someone back you in tone you know push your, you guys' narrative um, and that's kind of sad, and you know that that makes me sad as an Adolf because you know my grandparents are now from Mississippi and Arkansas, and most of my family's from Arkansas too. You know, most of my heritage is really from Arkansas, mm. Fort City, and, up and down in the Delta. And you know, I just kind of wish that you know you guys can get back and then you know maybe even the playing field, and hopefully we can go to DC. And you know, I may not be here. Uh, to uh, see those reparations, but you know, I have nieces and nephews who are 19 and have exactly. kids, and they just don't understand, you know, what it costs to live in America. Well, like, well, like, well, like, but, well listen, know, I'm the old guy. Well, listen, like, you ain't got to worry about nobody understanding as it comes down. Life's going to hit everybody real hard. And, I, you know, between COVID and inflation and this great wealth transfer, life's going to hit everybody. Um, and all ADOS people are about to get a swift kick in the butt. 
And so a lot of people who didn't, a lot of people who, you know, you were having a hard time explaining stuff because life was just good enough. Sometimes life ain't got to be good, but life will give you be just good enough for you to feel like something's about to shift. And like, that's not going to be the way it is anymore. So I think you're going to be able to have that conversation with a lot of people who you thought you couldn't have the conversation with. So I wouldn't worry about that. Give it time and you'll be able to come back and have that conversation. But, you know, everything in the fullness of time. Yeah. I don't I don't have any doubts about it. These, these things take time. And sometimes it's slow, you know, sometimes it happens over a number of years, especially with the fighting we've had in terms of not only just internally, but externally in terms of uh, racist institutions, the misinformation campaign about us, all the smears. Then we had people internally telling lies. So, like, we've come out of that. Right. So I feel like that part of it is over. You know, what I mean, I feel like for them, I feel like there will be another fight on the horizons. But like that valley, we coming out of that. So we, we're going So we that that's a different valley. And I'm not saying that there's not a hill ahead. When you come out of a valley, there's a hill. But that little raggedy valley we was in, that little raggedy valley is over. We're going to have a real fight. And if that's the fight I want. I want the real fight. These, I'm tired of fighting little raggedy things. It's time for the real fight. And so I think that's where we're headed. So it's all good. I won't even worry about it, fam. <laughs> I appreciate you. No problem. Thank you, Yvette. Love Thank you. you. Um, eight hours for life. All right. Appreciate you, fam. You have a good one. You have a good one. Hey, fam, that's going to be my last call for the night to the people in the queue. Um, apologies. I'll get you next time. Let me just say this, too. Um, uh, somebody said how to sign up for the conference. Um, we haven't put tickets on sale yet. The only thing that we do have, if you go to at ADOS org, which is our um, Twitter account, you can, you can, there's a link there for you if you wanted to book the hotel. The only reason we released the hotel early, we would normally release that at the same time with the tickets to the conference is because people, I, I got a lot of requests of people saying, Hey, what's the hotel? I would like to go on and get my hotel. What's the hotel? Yvette? Do you have an official hotel? And then I started, so I started to feel like people were, people were actually, booking other hotels because we hadn't released an official hotel. So I felt like it was time and shout out to everybody who put together the graphics and all that stuff for that. That's all, that's all people inside the org. I'm not doing none of that. So shout out to them, you know, who are working on that, all of that stuff. So shout out to them, but yes. So, you know, that's kind of, that's why that happened. If anybody's like, why is she releasing? Why are they, what are they doing? Releasing the hotel. That's why. Cause people were requesting it. Um, and people need to be able to budget, right? Figure out what that looks like. Save your nickels and dimes and dollars. People need to be able to say, okay, it's going to be two nights, one night, and we got to do this. Everybody needs to be able to figure that out. So that's why, if anybody is asking. So anyway, fam, uh, I apologize to the people who I didn't get to tonight. We will get to you um, next time. We will get to you next time. I'm going to try to get on out of here, everybody. Let's see, do I have anything else that I... Did I have anything else that I needed to share? Let me make sure. Did I miss anything? <laughs> I always miss something. Ain't nothing you can do. Anyway, so, but fam, please keep it easy, breezy. Please try. Please try with all of your goodness in your heart. Please try not to bother nobody, and please try not to let nobody bother you. Work your last nerve. Uh, finish your libation. Uh, if you if you started one, whether it's chamomile or something else, finish whatever you got in front of you and get ready to, 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 to go and take it on again tomorrow. All right. Um, if you're on Patreon, I will see you. I will see you tomorrow. If you are not on Patreon, um, you know, I'll see you next week. Um, to those who asked about this little end image that I used in the show, this is just me playing around on mid journey. <laughs> I have, I have thousands of them. <laughs> thousands of them. I just haven't used the other ones yet, but anyway, fam, y'all have a good one. I will see y'all later. You know, we're going to, we're going to keep up the fight and I'll keep you updated on all the conference info when tickets, all that stuff, when it happens, um, I'll keep you updated. All right, fam. Talk soon.
Thank you.